Okay, I'm going to kick this off. So welcome, everybody. I think some other folks may be dropping in. This is a uh, recorded session, and this is our kickoff event for our Restorative Stories project. Something that we've decided to do uh, after getting some great ideas from our extended community is to invite folks to send in stories that they have to tell. And what we're gonna ask you all to do, anybody who wishes to participate in this, is to videotape yourself doing a three to five minute restorative story. And by a restorative story, what I mean is something that you feel will make people's lives better by inspiring them or moving them or entertaining them or all of those things. And we'll ask those of you who wish to participate in this to submit your video on YouTube or Vimeo, or you can attach it to an email uh, to the following address. And I'm gonna give you this address later so you'll have it in, in a visual in front of you, but just so you know, it's tbgonline at barrowgroup.org. And what's gonna happen is uh, anybody who wants to participate in this can video themselves, send it in. The submissions are due by May 22nd. And at that point, we're gonna go through all these submissions and curate them. And some of the submissions will be shared in an online community event, the Friday night special on June 5th. And for that event, we're gonna have people uh, basically show up and, and we're gonna ask them about the stories. We're gonna share the stories, the video of their stories, uh, and uh, talk to them about what gave them the idea or inspired them to make it in the first place. And with all the selections, we'll, we'll go through that process. And we're actually looking very much forward to that. And we thought the best way to kick this off was to um, have me go over a very brief approach to how to craft a story. There are, of course, a zillion ways to do it, and you're invited to utilize any techniques you want. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to share this approach with you. So for starters, I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna share with you a story that uh, Mike Birbiglia tells. It's, this is actually an excerpt from a, a, a one person show that he did. We first began working on this in I think 2004 called Sleepwalk With Me, uh, not to be confused with the narrative film that is also has that title and Mike's in it. And, um, but uh, this is different. This is a one person show he did. And there's a story inside of the show that he tells. And um, an animator took it upon themselves to animate it. And it's actually, it, it's pretty cute and gets the story across really clearly. So I'm going to share that with you all now. All right, everybody, there we go. There's the story. And so what I'm gonna do is go over story structure, one system, one approach to story structure, and we've all have that story as a reference point. So I'm gonna share this with ya. And here we have a picture of story structure. So in this picture, you can see that there's, I, I hope you can see my cursor moving around here and you can see that at the bottom of it, there's this black line here and that's an arrow that is a, it represents time, it's a timeline. And this particular arrow is measuring the time of the telling of the story. In other words, you know, you start off a story, you go once upon a time, blah, 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 all this stuff happened and kind of goes through time until you get to the end of that arrow and you go, the end. And that's what that arrow is representing, the time of the telling of the story. So that's that. Up here, we have a picture of what story structure can look like. There, again, there are many approaches to analyzing story structure, but this is one simple approach that I thought would be a great reference point for us all. 
So the first thing that happens in the story is what some people call the setup. People call this a lot of things. Some people call it the beginning or the context or the orientation or the norm or the status quo or the world or any of those things. But it is, it's the part where the, the, the context is being established. It's being set up. Just who, where, what, very simple orientation thing. Very soon in the timeline, we get to this next bit, which is the inciting incident. That's the technical term. Some people call it the hook. I tend to call it the hook. It's, it's, uh, it's a great word for it because it's the part of the story that hooks you in. It's where something happens that's different from the norm, that's extraordinary, that introduces some sort of a problem or a mystery or a dilemma or any of those things. So I'm going to back up for a second. In the setup part of Mike's story, that's where he's saying, I went to Katmai National Park uh, with my sister Patty. We went there in order to see bears. And that's setting up everything. Then we get to the inciting incident where in his story, there's all of a sudden a problem. Mike experiences a lecture from a ranger who introduces the concept that a bear might possibly maul them. And now there's a danger. Some people call this, by the way, the bum, bum, bum moment. And it's a good nickname for it because this danger is being introduced right there. And now we're like, ooh, what's going to happen? Will he be mauled by a bear or not? And we course through the story. Now, in this part here, you can see in our line, it sort of rises. And that's just to represent that something is building. You know, things are happening. He's got all sorts of things. He's fly fishing. Uh, there's so many things happen. And then we get to this bit where something goes on where all of a sudden it feels like, uh-oh, there's really, the, our characters are stuck. This is a big problem. And in Mike's story, that would be when Patty sights the brown bear walking towards them. Oh no, they're in trouble. There's no going back now. What can happen? Well, the only thing that could happen is the big thing in the story, the big thing that happens at the end, which in this particular story, I believe is when the guide snaps into action and comes and screams, yeah, 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 at the bear and all of that stuff. That's your climax of the story. Now, there are a bunch of ways to identify a climax, and I'm going to go over those in a second, but first let's finish up with the story structure things. The next part is what some people call the denouement or the end or the resolution, the wind up. And in Mike's story, I think that's when he's processing, which is what happens in a denouement, it's the processing of the climax. He processes that and you know, thinks about how in retrospect, he, he should have, this guy should have told him about the Hia plan and it was like giving him one of those, you know, a bad parachute. He uses the analogy of the, the gym class parachute and all of that stuff. And that's all this part here. That's story structure and that's how it applies to the story that we just shared with you. So I'm going to now get into the weeds a little bit about the climax part so we can talk about ways to identify that. Um, so let me just see what we got going on here. There we go. I'm going to just share the screen for this bit. Uh -huh. And here we go. So here are ways to identify the climax. First on this list here, we see that it's towards the end. And yes, indeed, the, the climax of stories, the main event, that's one of the nicknames of a climax, it happens right towards the end of a story. It's just the way stories are. In jokes, they're the punchline. You know, we, when we think of a story, we think of this thing that happened. And then we tell the story, we just kind of have to get to that thing. And somehow we get there. And that's it. That's the big thing that happens at the end, right? And so that's the climax. So if I was looking at a story, and if you're looking at your own stories, and you think that there's a big thing that happens at the end, make sure you put it towards the end, because it matters. Next thing on this list, it says a change in the course of action. And yeah, that's true. In other words, something is going on throughout a whole story. You get to the climax, and now something very different is going on. In Mike's story that you just saw, there's, you know, it's the story of him going to the park and encountering a bear and, and the danger of that. And that's all going on through the bulk of the story. We get to the climax. And now that the guide has, has done his thing, after that, things are different. It's now him processing the training session he got and, you know, finding analogies to 
you know, how unsatisfactory and problematic that training session was. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of many uh, such training sessions I've had in my life. I was river rafting once and certainly was not adequately prepared for some things that happened. Uh, this is a change in the course of action in his story. Next on this list, it says a reveal. And the idea is that typically at the climax, there is a reveal and there is in Mike's story that it is news to Mike and to us even that the actual way to get a bear to go away is other than just clapping your hands and saying your name. It seemingly involves some sort of aggressive charge and loud sounds and everything like that. And that's news. So it's news to everybody and that happens there. An extreme physical event is typically part of a climax. Now, not always, by the way, not all climaxes have extreme physical events. And, you know, I suppose one could look at this particular climax of the guide running in and it's not necessarily extreme, but it is a, it's a physical thing that happens. It's pretty big. A guy screaming and running is kind of semi extreme at least. So it might fit the bill there. And last but not least, and this is really maybe of all these guidelines, the most important one, you can end the story now. Once you've gotten to the climax, you can end the story and it's pretty much the same story. If we were to cut off the part of Mike's story where he talks about you know, his thinking about what the, the ranger told him and how in retrospect, he, he was not um, told the proper thing, he was kind of peeved and all that stuff. It's really fun to hear and it's funny and it, it, it's nice and it gives it a good button and all that stuff but it is not essential to the story. You could tell the story of what happened in, at, at uh, the national park and end it with uh, the guy saving their life from the bear. So these are ways to identify main events and you can use this checklist when you're creating your own story to go back and come up with whatever you think is the main event or climax of your story and check to see, does it have these things? Again, it doesn't have to have all of them, but typically they'll have most of those things. So that's, uh, that's that about um, identifying climaxes. So th the last thing I'm gonna share with you are just the specific guidelines of this project. So uh, I'm gonna do that right now, hang on. And here we go. So these are the guidelines. This is everything I said before, but here you have it visually, it's in writing. And all of these guidelines, by the way, and the charts I just shared with you and the uh, link to that uh, video of Mike's story are going to be posted on our web, shot, our, our, uh, web page at barrowgroup.org. So uh, you can you know, reference them there. And here, as it says, as I said before, that you're going to video, those of you who wish to participate, of course, um, video yourself telling a three to five minute restorative story. This time limit, three to five minutes matters. S some of you may have stories that, you know, I, I have a story I just, I just wrote down and, and uh, you know, I, I love the story. So, oh, I thought it was a short story and uh, maybe five minutes long. And by the time I wrote it and read it out loud, I realized, oh my gosh, it was 17 minutes telling the story. So, if I wanted to submit it for this, I have to chop it down to three to five. And that's just for pragmatic reasons. We can't, uh, there's no way we'd be able to share a bunch of stories that are 20 minutes long. I also think process wise, you'll find it nice and manageable. Just a nice short three to five minute restorative story. As it says here, something you feel will make people's lives better by inspiring them, moving them, entertaining them, or all of those things, which is what I said before, as you know. Here's the information about where to submit your video. YouTube or Vimeo, or you can attach it to an email and you send it to this address, tbgonline at beargroup.org. Next here, you can see the submissions, as I said before, are due by May 22nd, 2020. And we will have to hold to that date for a bunch of reasons. So make sure you get these in by then. Um, and by the way, if you may feel like, gee, I don't really have a story, but I have a friend who's got a great one. You can invite anybody to send in the video. If we find a story that's compelling and, and, and you know, uplifting and restorative and all the things we're looking for, we'd be happy to include that in this evening. Um, 
The submissions will be curated and some of these submissions will be shared in an online community event. This is what I said before. And that event is the Friday night special on June 5th. And the timing of that is, uh, will also be on our website. It is a Friday night, just like tonight. Um, and you'll be able to get all that information there. So at this point, I'm just going to take questions from anybody, if anybody has them, about any of the things I've just covered, whether it's questions about story structure, or how to identify a climax, or the guidelines of this particular event. So uh, I'm gonna stop my screen share and turn everybody on here so I can see y'all. And uh, now, um, I actually, because of the way this is, uh, the screen is laid out, I cannot see all the participants. So if you have a question that um, you'd like to ask, one of the things you could do is if you click the participants button, there will be a button that says raise hand. And if you do that uh, in the list of participants, which I have in front of me, I will see a blue hand. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, of course, is just raise your hand. And if, if I can see you, I'll, I'll call on you that way and ask you to unmute your microphone and ask your question. So at this point, I just want to throw it out there. Does anybody have a question about any of what we covered? Yeah, I see Alana, I see your hand up. Uh, so go ahead and unmute. I, I still can't hear you. There. Hi. Hi. Um, does it have to be related to the times that we're in right now or just anything that's restorative? Anything. Okay. It, it certainly does not. Sometimes, you know, Sometimes it's nice to hear stories about things that have nothing to do with what's going on now. It's a, it's a reminder that we have a life other than this, right? That's not true. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, yes, feel free to do that. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. Sure. Anna, I see your, Anna Kukori, and I, I see your hand up. Um, go ahead and unmute. And um, was the example you showed of Mike Berbilia, was that like three to five minutes? I I didn't have a sense. Oh, how long was that? Um, you know, I didn't time it. I think I think it's about uh, I think that's about a six minute story. Um, oh, okay. If you if you, if you uh, go online, you know, you can just YouTube uh, Mike Birbiglia, I'm a bear, etc. Uh, and we'll have. It the went link very on, fast. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's it's yeah. like it's that's a it's somewhere between three and six minutes, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, Adam, I saw your hand up. What's up? Yeah, do we have to animate it like he did? I'm kidding. Uh, but we're, so we're telling the story to the camera? Yeah. And yeah. that's our audience? Yes, that's right. Great. That's, that's Great. exactly right. Animation or not? Animation or not. <laughs> uh, Carla, yes. Go ahead and unmute. Hey. Uh, that was great. Um, if you already videotaped the story that you want to submit, can you do that or does it absolutely. have to be? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. This does not need to be a newly generated video. Okay. So can, if it's a before an audience, no, even if it's just a fine. view? Or, oh, totally, that's fine. Totally great. Fine. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, great. Anybody else? Uh, Mackenzie. So in his story, Mike has some really fun tangential bits. Yeah. Um, what are clues within our own stories of things that are bits to include that go off topic a little bit, but are valuable when we're narrowing down? Yeah. Um, I, I wish I had a formulaic answer to that. In, 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 you know, so I'm going to, uh, I have two answers. One is, is, I hope doesn't feel like a dodge of the question. It's a great question, but one is use your discretion. I mean, it really is discretionary. The other thing is that um, you can ask yourself, does this in any way illuminate or make more clear something I'm trying to get across? I'll give you an example. One of the stories that I'm working on right now is, and I'm not going to take the time to tell you the story, but is a story of, of uh, some major events that happened during my honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And at one point, uh, I... Um, I tell the story of uh, how we were, uh, we went to Africa in, in hopes of seeing chimps and gorillas. And it's kind of important to the story uh, 
to, to get across the extent to which I wanted to see a chimp and a gorilla, which, which was, it was, I, it was a, I really wanted this. And in constructing the story, every time I tried to describe that, it always felt general uh, somehow, like all of a sudden, instead of going from specific event to specific event, it felt to me, you know, concise and interesting and hopefully really entertaining and compelling. All of a sudden I was just describing, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm really into chimps and I always have been. And so I, I thought, I won't, I won't include that. So I've shared this story with, with a couple of writer friends of mine. In fact, I shared it today with Mike Berbiglia, who, who's the story you just saw. And uh, he brought up, and as did all, every, literally every writer I shared it with said like, is there a way to quickly convey how much you wanted to see these chimps? Because of what happens in the story, it's, it's completely relevant. And I said, yeah. And then I was like, I, and I couldn't, quite think of it. And then I started to think, well, there is this odd thing that as far back, the, as best as I can recollect, there was this show that I used to watch on Saturday afternoons. It was a kid's show called Lancelot Link Secret Chimp, which was Get Smart, sort of. Like, the, I don't know if you know yeah. that series. It was like, yeah, yeah. with chimp actors. All the actors were chimpanzees. There were no humans. It was the wildest thing. I don't know how the hell they did this. And it was to me so funny and compelling and entertaining. And, you know, specific things that happened for me watching it. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, gee, I might, and I don't know if I'll do this, but I might allude to that show. So I, that I could say, like, my fa I, I've, I'm into chimps. There was this show and I could tell some stunning, funny story about me and watching that show or something and ideally get it to be really concise and that would be a tangent, but it's there to get across this passion. Now I might do that as I suspect if I did this, because I tried it once and I was like, eh, it still might be too long, too much of a tangent. It's just taking too much real estate. In which case I'll be on the hunt as I am for a way to do it more concisely so that I can get the information in there Hopefully it's funny and entertaining and now I'm right back to our story. And so that's the kind of things I'd be considering as I take tangents. Does it help illuminate something? Is it clear and concise and hopefully compelling? I hope Thank that's you. helpful in some way. That is. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Adam. Uh, sorry, I have another question. I'm actually working on something um, which would probably possibly fall under this that may have no dialogue. Is yeah. it possible to submit that? Definitely submit it. And, uh, and uh, you know, it, uh, w it'll either fit or not. I really don't know, but I would definitely submit it. Sometimes it's surprising. You know, um, it's funny, I, because we just watched that story, I have Mike Berbiglia on the brain. But we did this thing when, when we were doing the new one on Broadway, we had a night where we thought it would be really fun to invite um, people to audition for his understudy. And so he ran a contest where people could do monologues of his from his material and actually send in videotapes of them performing them. And what happened is a bunch of people, I would say the vast majority of people just sent in, the, you know, them saying his stuff, really great, some incredibly talented people. Two of the people that we ended up not being able to decide, so we, we chose three people and they were all given, you know, trips to the court theater and tickets to the show and, and all this stuff. And two of them were other than telling the story. One of them was um, a woman who played the videotape of, oh no, she didn't do video. It was, she did it all in Italian. Uh, and she was dressed like a mime and she did the entire thing, story in Italian. <laughs> and it was hysterical, it was so funny. She was sort of dressed up like Charlie Chaplin. She had a, the Trump m mustache and everything. Who was that? Do we know her? I, 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 don't even, I don't recall her name, but and she was brilliant too. I mean, way talented person. And then the third uh, person that we included was somebody who set one of his monologues to song. And she actually it brought her accompanist. She had a beautiful Broadway caliber voice. She sang it, it was so funny. Um, and those were out of the box things that none of us considered when we were putting out the submission requests. So it's the same thing here. If you got something that has no dialogue, feel free. And that goes for any other idea that has somebody has that's out of the box. And, and then if I submit more than one, like if I do a straight story and this other thing, that's okay totally fine. You can submit as many as you like. That's not a problem. As the only thing that matters is that the time length. 
really can't go longer than three to five. Thanks. Yeah, good. Any other questions? Okay, I don't see any. Oh, there we go, Maureen. I, I, I just really need to know the name of this chimp show again, please. Lancelot Link Secret Chimp, which you can see online. It is a, I have to say, I've watched it. I've gone back and watched it as an adult and it is so twisted. It, <laughs> it, it, I, I can't figure out what part of my psyche got off on this show, but uh, it is pretty funny. The way they did the show, as best as I can tell, is they set out to create a story and then they would just film the chimps, but the chimps being chimps would just do anything. And so they would then rewrite the story to fit the, what the chimps did. So like sometimes, you know, a chip would, might, you know, pick up a telephone or something and just kind of be doing that. And they would put in dialogue, you'd be going, and when they got the chimps to speak by, they put, they gave them things to chew. So they'd like this gum or something and they'd just be going like, and then they'd put, put in dialogue, you'd be going, hello, hello, I can't hear you. I can't, you're, you're too loud, you're too loud, you know, or something like that. And it's just insane, but a very real thing every Saturday. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. That's all I need, okay. personally. There you go. All right. Well, um, thanks so much for participating in this session. And, I, and you have all the materials that I hope you need. I hope everybody is having a, as good a time as possible uh, in this, uh, these very strange times. I hope you're healthy. Uh, I hope you're finding a way through whatever spiritual path you're on. Uh, I don't mean that in a theological sense. I just mean that in as a matter of uh, spirits. And uh, I'm really glad that you're interested in this project. And I look forward to hearing all the and seeing all these stories. And uh, we'll, we're looking forward to sharing them. Here.